go ahead and get started. I'm Adele O'Neill. I'm the room coordinator for this for this session. I, I want to welcome everybody. And like PJ said this morning earlier, this is definitely a year of firsts. Uh, district 7 held their first online district meeting and election of officers in May. And now, gosh, we're having our first online TLI. And right now, gosh, we have uh, 105 attendees of this session for this great topic, Pathways for Members. It's so important, especially starting now. Are you a new Toastmaster or a seasoned Toastmaster just getting started in Pathways? Maybe you are confused how everything in Pathways fits together. Well, you've come to the right place because Erica will give you an overview and share with you the format the Pathways program follows, how to navigate the online system, and tools to help you reach your maximum potential. There will be, a live, uh, there will be live demonstrations, tips and tricks, and time for questions. Our speaker, Erica, is a member of Banfield Barkers, a closed corporate club in Vancouver, Washington, where she is the outgoing VP of membership. She joined two years ago to meet new people at her workplace, but ended up using the Pathways program as a foundation to grow her career. She spoke at the November TLI and at several division and club trainings about Pathways. So please help me welcome our speaker, Erica Adgeson. Thank you so much, Adele. I am really excited to be here with you all today. This is a brand new format for me and not exactly what I was expecting when I agreed to be a presenter at this TLI this year. I would like to go over a little bit about my presentation. So I'll just start with sharing that screen. All right, so Pathways Demystified. This presentation came about uh, about two years ago, well, about last year, when I was presenting to my club and I wanted to get everyone excited about Pathways. It was something that I saw other members in my club really struggle with understanding how everything was connected. These were seasoned Toastmasters. I'm curious how many of you are seasoned Toastmasters that have been in this legacy program for years and years and years, and now, that it's gone, you're like, well, I guess it's time to figure this out. We see it, I see a few. I see Jesse, your hands up. Oh, I see a few more. Well, welcome. Thank you for finally taking the sleep into Pathways. What I'd like to go over today is Pathways Demystified. So I'm going to give a general overview of Pathways. I'll do some online demonstrations. There will be time for questions. If you would like to ask questions along the way, I'll try to keep an eye on that. Otherwise, it'll just happen during the question and answer period. I would like to share with you the Pathways Project Catalog, which has been a tool that has really helped me unlock how everything in Pathways relates. I'd also like to share with you the Toastmaster Success Plan, which you'll find out about shortly. And then we'll have some time for another question and answer period. I would like to encourage you to ask as many questions. This is a information packed presentation, so I know we won't be able to get to every single question there is. We'll close out the meeting um, at the appropriate time, but I know we have lunch afterwards and I don't mind staying around a little bit after if you still have some things that would like to go, that you would like to get answered. I would like to show you that Pathways isn't as scary as it sounds. It is new, it is on the computer, it isn't what many of you know. I'm also curious, how many of you are just brand new Toastmasters? Or you've never given a speech, you're just starting into Pathways. Do we have anyone that fits that description? Oh, I see Janine, I saw you raise your hand. And I see, I see a few thumbs up here and there. So welcome to you as well. Toastmasters, what's your reason for being in Toastmasters to begin with? 
Maybe you were someone who wanted to become more comfortable speaking in public. It terrified you to get up in front of an audience and share your thoughts and gain confidence. Maybe it was to meet new friends. For me, it was to meet people in my workplace. Possibly professional or personal development was your, was your why. For me, again, I belong to a close corporate club that professional development is part of our, our plan, our master plan, and Toastmasters fits into that perfectly. If you are brand new to Toastmasters, Toastmasters helps you grow in two different ways. One of those is through meeting roles, where you are the table topics master, or the Toastmaster, or the timer. It also helps you grow with pathways, and that's what we're here to talk about today. How many of you are signed up for a path? Oh, look at all of you. I'm hoping almost everyone. And if you aren't signed up yet, I'm hoping that we can motivate you to take that leap, to take a survey, to choose what might really interest you, and you can choose that path to go down. Pathways offers 11 different paths to choose from. Those are listed here. I'm sure some of you may have just picked any path. I know one person in particular who is here today that said, I don't have any desire to go further along in my professional career, which almost all of these are designed to do. That person, he's sort of a funny guy, he chose engaging humor. Why not work on being funnier? Sometimes I laugh at his jokes, sometimes I don't. How do we get started in Pathways? We register for a path. It sounds simple. It's that first step that you take. You just have to pick one. It doesn't have to be one that you live with forever. You can finish that, take a new one. But it gives you that, that introduction and you can cater this path to really fit what your goals are and what your, where you want to be, where you want to end up. Each path consists of five levels and I'd like to do a general overview of what those five levels are. Level one, mastering fundamentals. This is an icebreaker speech. If you are familiar with the legacy program, you're familiar with an icebreaker speech. This is four to six minutes, get up, talk, say, this is me, this is something quirky I like, I'm terrified to give a speech, here I am, please don't laugh at me, or laugh at me if I'm trying to be funny. The second project in a level one is evaluation and feedback. This is the project that never ends. It consists of two speeches, a first speech where you give a speech about any topic you'd like, a second speech where you take feedback from the first and present again, and then you evaluate someone. You've learned how other people evaluate you and what they're looking for, and now it's your chance to do that for someone else. The third part of this level is research and presenting. You get to pick any topic you want. You can pick knitting, you can pick Basket weaving is my, my general go-to. You can pick small engine repairs if you'd like. It can be anything that interests you and you would like to share. That's all that is needed for a level one. Most people, that's where they get stuck. It's that getting started. It's that very first step in doing things. And as you can see, it's not that difficult. It's a few speeches. It's getting up a few times, but it shouldn't take a year to do. If you're willing to put in this work, if you're excited to be here and the reason you're here is to grow. Level two is very similar to level one, just a few projects. Depending on which path you're on, you can be understanding your leadership style or understanding your communication style. There's a path specific project, which is individual to each of those different paths. And then you have an introduction to Toastmasters mentoring. This is three speeches. They mostly aren't very difficult. That's all that's needed on a level two. Really, 
the legacy program, you had a book that you had to work through. This is a few speeches and then you're done with the level. Level three, you have a past specific project again. You have two elective projects. You can choose from 13 different projects what you would like to do. You choose two of them, complete those projects. Here, there are meeting role, role requirements to get past a level three. That would be a table topics master, which could be part of an elective project in this level. Evaluator, which you've done if you've completed a level one. And then you need to be a Toastmaster. You need to find the courage to get in front of everyone and fill time with introducing speakers, thanking them, adding some of yourself into your meeting. Level four, you build skills. You have a path specific project. You have more elective projects to choose from. As we grow in levels, they get a little bit more difficult. This might be six months of work in a project that you lead. It might be doing something for your club and then giving a speech on that. Most of the speeches are five to seven minutes once you get past the level one icebreaker, which is four to six. So it's not something that's unattainable. It's not too hard. You don't have to talk forever. You don't have to give a big speech, which you might if you choose to do a level five elective project. Again, another path specific project, you reflect on your path. So I know I went over this quickly. I wanna have a lot of time for questions. What's in it for me? That's what most people are thinking. Beside, besides the confidence that you gain by giving speeches, by practicing things, by putting yourself out there, you also get digital badges. And who doesn't like stickers? My daughter, she loves stickers. You get a certificate at the end of each level and at the end of your path. I have this at work, or I belong to the, my work club, and I print out all of my certificates, and I post them all around my desk. So anyone who comes there, they can see, oh, what is this about? What is Toastmasters? It's a great way to advertise Toastmasters. Also, Toastmasters will send out an letter to your employer at the end of a level three, four, or a five, which shows your boss that you've been, in my case, using some of my workday to work on Toastmasters projects. It shows them I'm doing something and I'm being successful with that. It also gives you the chance for mentorship. After level two, another program is unlocked that allows you to nurture somebody else's growth. And then Triple Crown, we just heard quite a bit about Triple Crowns. Lots of you received triple crowns this year, and that's when you complete three levels, that would be a triple crown. It's actually three educational awards, but the levels are one way to get those. And then PJ just gave a great overview on the Dis Distinguished Club program, how that applies to pathways. Six of those goals are educational goals. If four members compete a level one. So that is one, two, three, four, five speeches. If four members in your club get that, your club gets one point. If two members complete a level two, it's another point, two additional level twos, another point, two members complete a level three, a point, and then one point if any member completes a level four, five, or a DTM which he said, or which he announced was the new changes for this year. And then a secondary point again. One thing to note is that one member cannot complete four level ones and get a point. You only get one credit per point. I know I just packed a lot in right there. Is there any, are there any questions that we have in the chat that are coming up? Oh. We've got some. Jesse, do you want to unmute? I have a question. Uh, can the requirements for all levels be completed out of sequence and be credited? Yes. So a change they made about six months ago, maybe, maybe more, was that you do not have to complete all of your levels. You, the projects within the levels, you can complete in any order. The levels themselves, you can now complete you could be working on a, you could complete your level one, 
have an opportunity for a speech in a level two mm -hmm. and use that early and it would still count. Such as if I'm in uh, currently in level three in my current pathway and I am a Toastmaster, can that go to my level five requirement for being a Toastmaster? Could you explain the level five Toastmaster? So to complete a level three, you need to have the role of a Toastmaster. Right, but I believe on your screen, when you did yes. what's in a level five, if you could go back to that screen, perhaps a moment. Oh, it wasn't there, so I'm, I'm not sure. So okay. in a, a level there three. There we go, Tab level three is table topics master or evaluator, whatever. If I'm in level one and I am the Toastmaster that night, can I still get credit for this level three? Yes, it still applies and there's a way Perfect. to track which roles you've done throughout any meeting. Absolutely, from our uh, agendas. Mm -hmm. Great. Right. Thank you so much. No problem. Were there any more questions right now? I have one question. Sure. Uh, with the, you can complete the projects out of order, but don't you still have to like you can't get credit for level three before you actually complete level two. Is that correct? That's at this point you can. We tried you this. You can last, now. It, we tried it the last TLI, oh. and James was able to submit a level. I think a level three award before a level two. Oh, okay. Well, it, it, and in in Club Central also. I don't know that we went that far. I know I, I, that I'm sure you could do it in, you could probably do it in Pathways. I'm not sure you could do it in Club Central. That would be the test. There's a response in the chat that says no. Okay. So I think that may have been found out after we had, uh, had looked that last time. And I can't actually see my chat right now just to <laughs> so <laughs> I think that once. So many things at once. <laughs> I have three screens going on and I'm still, I don't know. <laughs> But, uh, but still, even so, it's really nice that you can complete things out of, you can do them out of order, whereas originally when they launched it, you could not. Oh, right. That's, that's a win. Right. Originally when they launched it, you did not, you, level three was not visible until you completed level two. Right. What I really like about the change is that in level four and level five, you have some projects that require more time more time as in you need to work with a group of people and have a result and then have them evaluate you on your work as a leader. Well, it, you can start working on that early because you know it's coming. It gives you that opportunity to stay moving forward instead of, I finished everything. Oh no, here's a project where I need six months of work. Well, now I can't go anywhere for six months. You know, I have to finish that first. Uh, Ed, there, there was a question, uh, does the Triple Crown require one to complete three levels in one year? Yes, so the Triple Crown is for that year, that Toastmasters year. So it could be three levels, it could be the mentor project and two educational awards, a DTM counts as an educational award, sorry, uh, it could be the mentor program and two levels. I don't know if I said that. I think it came out a little different than it was written in my head. So yes, it's just within the, this year. So starting on July 1st, brand new Toastmasters year, no matter how many levels you've completed or other educational awards you've received, you need to get three to reach that triple crown. And as you all saw, some people create, some people, accomplish triple crown, triple crown, or like multiple triple crowns. All right, should we move on? I, I have a question. Sure. So I, I started about a year ago. Actually, I came back about a year ago. And I've done many of these things in level one, but who, who records them? Because I, when I pull up the pathway, Oh, you, you cut out. And I don't know where you went. So I will say that they should be recorded with your user account. 
even if you've left and come back, those should all be associated with your for Toastmaster number. So I hope that Erica, answered. Erica, could I ask a question on this uh, slide that you have before we move on? Absolutely. Um, I'm, I've been helping out as VP of Ed. I've been a Pathways Manager for a year. Uh, one thing that I've struggled with without really training, just kind of learned by do, is when I assign like a grammarian role, or topics master, that sort of thing. Um, does that offer the ability for a member to get credit for that anymore? Or is it just more, you know, gain from the experience, but not so much credit in Pathways? Right. I it is mostly the gain from experience and it's a way to having to, the requirement to complete each of those the three roles that are listed here before you pass a level three isn't hard like i said two of them may already be included in projects the only other one would be the toastmaster one of oh. the level two projects that i had that was Oh, I was just going to say, so in other words, I think in the beginning, you couldn't look ahead to your level, but now you can. So I could look to, uh, you know, say if I have a new member that would like to do the topics master role, I could go to level three and say, let's fill you in on this. But even though he's still on level one. They could absolutely do the topics master. The, there is a specific project that is you being the top, table topics master and then giving feedback. At the, I think it's the active listening project that yeah. you use those skills. So it's a little bit different in a setup where you are being the table topics master, but doing so in, in an intentional way hmm. for the project. But if it's something they're interested in and they want to learn that, it gives them those skills to say, this is what we're looking for when you are the table topics master. So it's a little bit of a preparation for that role which they might find helpful. Right. So okay, do people that's, still that's, need to that's, track that in their little user you. gear when they do like timer, this master, that sort of thing? They still need to track they can, in the gear? They can, but it's a, a, a recommended or it's a honor basis ah. thing or with your VPE. So if you need to be able to prove it to your VPE and they don't keep records otherwise, you might track it there. And I will show that. So another, but Pathways doesn't require it there anymore. It's just built into the projects that you're completing. I haven't seen anyone require, when I was looking at submitting my level three, it just said, have you done these roles? Oh, cool. That's good. Cause people for a while there, people were actually getting hung up because they weren't updating the little gear. So it didn't show that they had done those things. So I'd like to show you all really quickly what this looks like. And I'm just going to check my time. Okay, so I'll show you a little bit of these projects. This is what happens when you have too many screens going. <laughs> I don't know if you can all see me trying to find the right one. Let's see here. All right, back to the screen. If you have not seen the Pathways interface, when you log into your Toastmasters account, once you become a member, you will see it here. You can choose a path by going to, well, let me, let me start with, this is your Toastmasters homepage. You log in, it will say, welcome, whatever your name may be. My favorite way to get to Pathways is just to click on my name. I always forget where it is otherwise. And when you click on your name, this is the screen you'll find. If you're new to Pathways or if you want to start a new path, you can be enrolled in multiple paths. They do cost a little bit each time, but it opens up every project in that path for you. So you can choose a path. If you have been reluctant to go into Pathways because you like your books or you have trouble with the internet connection, whatever the case may be, if you have no way to print things, Toastmasters will print and send things to you for an additional fee. You can also, if you're using the digital base camp, print out all of the projects for no, well, it's the cost of paper and ink, but it allows you that control. In this case, I would like my materials, let's say I'm registering, 
this way. I can either take an online assessment or I can view all path options. If I know which path I'd like to do, I can choose view all path options. If I'd like to take an online assessment and have Toastmasters tell me which they recommend, depending on my language, it'll, I'll go through a short survey. It will recommend the top three. I can still choose whichever path I'd like. And I'm going to go over those paths in just a moment here. One other thing we had talked about is tracking your roles. And let me see here. I think if it's, oh, hang on. Not that one. We're going to go back to that. We're gonna skip on that. So here I'm going to enter my pathways learning program. I'm enrolled in two pathways. I also have the pathway mentor program opened. I choose those. I can choose open curriculum. And if you have not seen pathways before, this is to give you an idea. I have level one, again, my icebreaker evaluation and speed feedback project and the research and presenting. I click each of those to open the project and it will take me through with videos and surveys as I work through that project. It now opens in its own window. For a while it opened in this really little window that was frustrating for everyone. So this, it would actually be at the beginning of it. You just work through it and it tells you everything you need to do. Here. Any more questions here? I have a question, Erica. Sure. So in each in each pathway, the level one is the same. Yes. Are the requirements the same for each icebreaker evaluation, research and presenting? Yes. So level one is the exact same for all paths. So the, the lesson then would be the same as well? Yes, in because it's, just, it's an introduction to this process of giving speeches. So if you were in team collaboration, this would look exactly the same, except it would say team collaboration at the top. Same for strategic relationships. As you move through each of the levels, it starts changing a little bit and gets more catered to the different path. Okay. But the level one, it looks the same for everyone. If you are a VPE, if you are trying to get your club motivated, if you print out, our club prints out the icebreaker and gives it to new members. So we print out that project. And then even if they don't log into pathways and don't pick a path, they can still work through that very first project. And it's the same. Thank you. Yep. All right, so the next thing I would like to show you, and we'll look, back at the Toastmasters website a little bit more. But one resource that is my favorite resource, let me, is the Pathways, Paths, and Project Catalog. And this is something that, again, too many screens here. Let's see. You can find it on the District 7 homepage if you choose Pathways. When it's not, today it's working really slow. When it's not working really slow, it opens up this page. And right here is this Pathways Project Catalog. Adele, would you be able to put this into the chat window. Let's see here. Are you able to grab that Adele? Okay. I'll make sure that it gets into the chat window before we are over. Actually, if I stop sharing my screen, I can, can't I?
Okay, I see a comment from Christopher. I get a different screen when I go to D7. If you click on that link, it should take you to the Pathways Learning Center. Did that work now, Christopher? All right, so I'm going to start showing my screen again. It says his thing is loading. Oh, it's still loading. Yeah, I don't know why it's taking a while today. Let me share my screen again. And this is what will come up. This is an Adobe PDF that you can, it's dynamic so you can click through it. If you are a VPE or if you are a VP membership and you have people in your club who are still confused, if you print this entire thing out, staple it together, bring it with you every club, no matter which path someone is on, you will know which projects they need for their path. In this case, leadership development. If I click on that, it will take me level one, again, all the same, and then everything specific for level two, three, four, and five and it tells me what these electives are. Any of these I can click on, and it gives me a short project description. This tool has been my best friend. For, my, for me, if I'm trying to figure out, well, I have a speech I'd like to give, and my, one of my paths is team collaboration. Where can I fit that in? Or what am I working on? If I'm critiqued and saying that my vocal variety needs some work, there is a speech for, or there's a project for understanding your vocal variety. That's an elective in level three. I can read a little bit, a little bit about this. Is this something I'd like to put more effort into? And then I can choose that in pathways and learn the project. The other thing, so this, make a, make a bookmark for it. Try it when it isn't still loading, it should come up and you should be able to download it for yourself and really explore that. The other thing that I really found to be one of the most useful things with Pathways is something that Patrick Locke, who I can see up here in my corner, something he created. And this is a Toastmaster member success plan. This is something that if you are the type of person and you want to see the big picture, maybe Adele, she had shared with me that she's been a Pathways person for quite a while, but really being able to plan out what she wants to do would be beneficial to her. This plan I shared with her the other day, and I think she was excited about it as well. This is a poor picture of, let's find it right here. So this is something that Patrick gave me when he became my mentor. This is, it has a little bit about me. It has why I'm a Toastmaster. These are questions to ask myself so I stay on track. What would I like to accomplish? How do I interpret the Toastmaster's promise? And then it allows me to track where I'm going. And I'm going to stop sharing my screen for just a moment. And I posted it earlier and I will post it again into the chat window for anyone who would like it. Well, Jenny, there you go, it's right there. So this is a blank copy. You can edit as you would like. Start sharing my screen again. And for me, when he first gave me the sheet, I went through and I said, well, I'm already at TC in this case, I can track multiple pathways. I'm already a team collaboration level one, so I've checked that off. I can check off everything I am. Then I can plan ahead. I can say, well, for one path, I will need to do these projects. I filled them in. I think I actually filled them in on the one that I just posted, and I just realized that, that I should probably have taken some of those out. But you can use this sheet. You can cross off. You can edit as you'd like, and I'll make sure that I have an updated sheet soon. It allows me to track what my upcoming projects are. Once I schedule with my VPE, this is a little bit more advanced than the beginner part of Pathways, but it 
it allows me to say, this is when I've scheduled a speech and this is what I'd like to speak about. This is the level that it's for, or this is the path that it's for, this is the level, this is what I want the project to be about. So I can plan all these out and then when it's getting time or when I have time to work on Toastmasters things, I can go in and say, what was I going to do for that again? I had looked at the project maybe a month before. Okay, now it's time to plan this speech. As I complete these speeches, I can check things off, which if you're one of those list makers and you like to, I think Tara does because she's smiling at me right now, you just wanna check that off or cross it off. It allows you to do that. If you have long-term goals of, I want to complete these levels to get to reach my goal, which, I got a little bit busy this year, but otherwise my goals would have been, I'd like to complete level three at this time to keep me on my long-term goal. So it allows you to then check things off again and stay in tune with that. This sheet was really developed, I think Patrick, for reaching that DTM. And it covers things like the youth leadership program, and if you'd like to do that, and you can put your ideas down, or the TLIs that you attend, if you participate in speech contests, it helps you plan out your Toastmasters year. Because I had two levels, I also ran out of space here, so I added a little bit more for myself here, which is not on the sheet that I sent to all of you. That looks blank, so you can fill it in with your own things including each of your projects here. Erica? Yes. Several people have asked a question about where to get the form. And then there was another question way back in the chat about who can be contacted for help with their pathways. So who, you know, who can help us later on with pathways? You are welcome to reach out to me, James, who is, has a speech coming up after lunch. He is the, in my opinion, the Pathways guru. And he is teaching, or he's talking about base, base camp, what's it for? Base, base camp, camp managers. managers. Yeah. And that's really for, to help VPEs or presidents or secretaries, whoever can manage that, to really help their members move along with that, but you are welcome to reach out to me. I will put my email in the chat. And then the form for that I'm showing the project completion form, I've put a link to that in the chat if you're able to look. I posted it just a little bit ago. Oops. Currently, we're viewing someone else's screen. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, can you repost the link for the form again? I will put it in the chat window again. Let's see. Dave, are you able to see that now? No. Okay, so Jenny is not able to see that. Jenny, if you're able to see my email, if you want to send me an email, I'm happy to send that to you directly. Okay, and then I knew this was going to go fast. <laughs> we did run out of time. Um, I will Stay here for a little bit longer. You are welcome to stick around and keep talking, but I'll send it back over to you, Adele. We actually still have a few minutes, just a couple more minutes for questions if you want to ask, ask Erica a couple more questions. If I could uh, clarify the triple crown. Sure. So I've completed two levels, but that was before June 30th. So does that mean that everything is wiped out and then starting on July 1st, I have to have three levels before next year? 
June 30th? So you'll still have those levels completed, but they will not count, count to a triple crown. So okay. Within, so it has to be within the Toastmaster year. Right. And if you didn't submit those levels yet and you just completed them, then you could submit them. It's any levels submitted within the Toastmaster year might be the better way to say that. Okay. Good information. Thank you. Uh, Leon looks like he's raising his hand. Question about the Triple Crown also. So yeah. if you're in two different paths, um, in order to get the Triple Crown, do you have to have all three of them in the same path or could you mix and match? You had two you or can, more paths. You can mix and match. You can use, last year you could have used one of the legacy manuals as your educational point. It's mix and match. Okay, thank you. And I'll, what, can I make a comment? Back yes, Pat. Yes. Also, you don't have to have three different ones like the old program where they had to be three different awards. You couldn't get DCP credit for say two CCs in the same club. But with the pathways, you could get, you get credit if you do four level ones, you're gonna get credit for all of those. And even if they're in the same club, you're going to get credit for all of those on DCP. So it You'll, works a little bit different than the old program, but it's great. Oh. Will the club also get credit? Yes, that's what I'm saying. The club gets DCP credit. Where the old for all, program, for all level ones, all four level ones. Hey, that's yes. awesome. Yes. Uh -huh. Cool. Oh, I didn't realize they changed that. Thank you for clarifying, Patrick. The trick is to remember to also submit through. Club Central, or you get no DCP credit. <laughs> that's <Right>? true. <laughs> that's true. And that's for base camp managers, where James will definitely be going over that if you are a VP, E, president, or secretary, and don't have another session you'd like to join, that would be a great one I'd highly recommend. Kathleen. So I just want to, um, could you address the, I'm not sure quite how to word this. Um, Sometimes a Toastmaster belongs to multiple clubs, and as they work through pathways, do they have to designate which club is going to be earning credit? I believe that answer is yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna actually defer to Patrick <laughs> right now. You'll get the credit towards the club that you are in when you submit it. So say you're in multiple clubs. So I'm a member of three different clubs. But when I go into pathways and I'm ready to submit an award, then I log into the club that I want that award submitted to. And then I go in and complete it. That will send that completion request to that VPE of the club that I've logged into. So I've got to be conscious of where I want that to go when I get ready to submit it for approval. That answer your question? Well, I just wanted to, I, I think it's, yes, I believe so. So just let me restate what I think I heard you say, <laughs> which is if I'm a member of two clubs, let's say I'm a member of We Toasted and Wall Masters and I'm on two different paths, I just need to make sure that I keep my paths separate? No, uh, uh no, no, you don't, you can work, you can do talks for either club. It's only when you get to the point of where you're ready to submit the completion of the level. Okay, so when I am ready for, to submit a level one, two, three, four, or five, I just to make sure it is in a particular club or a specific. Yes. Club. Yeah, the club that you want it to be, uh, you, you know, uh, submitted into that you're logged into that club when you log into your pathways. Okay, I have to interrupt. Um, our time is up. Okay. Uh, I wanna thank Erica for your presentation. Uh, let's you know, give her a big hand. She did a great job. And Erica will be available for a few minutes after the session closes. Uh, I also wanna thank our Zoom Master Phyllis Harmon, she did a great job, you know, following up with everything. And 
thank you to the audience members uh, for attending this valuable session. I think based on the questions and I was trying to keep track of all the stuff in the chat room. Oh my gosh. It, it, yeah, there's a lot of questions still. <laughs> um, and Phyllis posted the schedule for the next session on the chat. And of course, PJ had sent out that email this morning. So you, you can get through that uh, that way into the next session. Uh, the next session starts at 1235. Uh, I, I made tuna salad for lunch. And so if anybody wants to join me, or, oh, wait a minute. We can't do that, can we? Um, okay, go to lunch. And then we'll see you back here at 1235 for one of the sessions, either VP membership, treasurer, finding your story, or pathways for base camp managers. And have a good lunch and have a good break. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And again, anybody who is still here and who has asked me for anything, if you can, if you want to send me an email and request anything that way, that would be the easiest way for me to keep track. Erica, I just made you host. I need to go get okay. ready for my next session. Thank you so much, Phyllis. Good luck. Okay. Thanks, Phyllis. Yeah, Erica. Erica, did you Okay. information in the chat thank you <laughs> what's up did you erica did you already put your contact information in the chat i have but i will put it again yeah it's probably way back, way back there you have to scroll way back and let's see okay i've got a few emails i'm hoping is there a way to does anyone know if there's a way to save the chat there, there is. is oh there is but down, um, down at the <laughs> bottom, there's three ellipses next to where you actually oh, okay. click on that, and you should see save chat. Awesome. I did not know that. Chat saved. Okay. Uh, so I have a few. Let's see. Beth, are you still here? I do work at Banfield. Um, I'm not sure who your daughter is, <laughs> but oh, I can't hear you. You're on mute. Let, let me unmute you. Emily Crow. Oh, I'm not sure I recognize that name. Uh, Van, uh, Vancouver office. Yeah. 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 She, she's, she's new. Um, she, she's works there. She's been there just 90 days. Um, oh, so I don't know what department she, it, it's in marketing at some, oh. some level of marketing. <laughs> well, that's, that's fun. I don't think I've been in the office in about 90 days. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> She went into the office one day and then it was COVID-19. So. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, and I'm seeing a bunch of you sending these. Why is the icebreaker required on each level? Uh, the icebreaker is required because it's the start to every level. It's, I don't have a great answer for that, but if you've already done it once, oh, sorry, there was a question, hi, why is the right icebreaker required on each level? Uh, that is, if you can start on any level or you can start at any, oh, okay, wait, Ron. So the icebreaker is only required on level one, but it is required on every path. Right. So you are still there. Uh, yeah, yes, that, that was my question was, why is it on every path? I mean, do you just do different aspects of your icebreaker or why? Well, you can talk about anything. And in most of these speeches, the really fun thing is that you might have a direction or things you want to focus on, but you can talk about, you can talk about video games. You can talk about gardening. That icebreaker, you are a complex individual that has many interests and many things you like. So in your icebreaker, you could talk about your family, or you could talk about your cat, or you could talk about 1960s muscle cars. And every time you give a different icebreaker, it doesn't need to be the same thing. It's just a different window into you. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Let's see. Anything, if there's anything I missed that is hiding in the chat, please feel free yeah, to. I don't see me. anything else. I mean, I think, I think you did a pretty good job of answering all the questions, but okay. let's see. Erica, can I offer a comment? Absolutely. I am thinking about doing 
um, an informal Zoom session with uh, you know five five participants at a time, uh, allowing for five to ten minutes uh, for prepared questions ahead of time, like the week before. Um, I'm actually going to just be doing it informally for my club. I'm, I'm new to Pathways. I just finished my DTM requirements for Legacy, but I'm jumping in head first to Pathways. Well, congratulations. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and I notice I definitely learn a lot more hands-on than I do from instructional videos, although videos are wonderful. Um, any, uh, have you done anything like that? Do you offer anything like that? Is anybody in the district done anything like this? Any tips that I might uh, consider? I, I know Patrick's has, has done a few for our division that are training sessions that are hands-on and you can bring your computers and this speech can be quite a bit, it's not longer, it's just we have a lot more times for that hands-on work. It, in my opinion, that's been successful. We haven't had a lot of people really take that on, but it sounds like you have some people that are more excited about it, which is great. No, I'm starting small because I realize this could end up taking a lot of time if I'm not careful. <laughs> <laughs> um, if it's something that's open to other people, you're welcome to invite me. I'd, I'd love to, to come and, and learn as well. Oh, yeah. I would be honored and I would be learning from you, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> so please feel free to, to reach out with that, I, I have a busy schedule, but it's yep. it's fun to share things with people who are excited about them. Great. Okay. Well, I just shot you an email uh, okay. hoping to get the one sheet download. Um, sure. I tried to do it through the chat, but it tried to save it like as a driver from my window. So I thought, well, I don't think I'll click on that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah, that was a direct uh, paste into there with the PDF, but I'll definitely send that send that straight to you. And if you would like any of the other resources, or if anyone else would. Um, please email me or write in the chat where I can send it, and I'll try to respond to everyone. Fabulous. And it looked like Kathleen or somebody had their hand up. I saw somebody. Yeah. Hand Thank you, David. I was going to, um, I've been thinking about the same thing, so on the same wavelength, which is, um, I kind of, I was kind of thinking, you know, in school, you would go to lab hours. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> what it is. It's a lab. So yeah. I was actually going to, um, and, and you're just kind of solidifying the thought is maybe once a month we have, you know, Thursday night lab hours for pathways and anybody who wants to, whether they're new or a veteran Toastmasters could jump on and then maybe like Dave, maybe you could lead it one month and Erica another month and I could do it a different month. And, and then that way it's just an opportunity for us to do it together, but perhaps not, I'm assuming 300 people would not show up. <laughs> <laughs> I was assuming not, it would not, be. right away anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we can always be prepared for that. But I'm thinking that just even if two or three show up, yeah. as you kind of as play with it together, you know, you can um we can learn a lot from each other. So um Dave, maybe you and Erica, maybe the three of us can put our heads together on what that might look like and, and just make a suggestion to uh let's see Eldred. That would be amazing. Like, uh, I, I feel like one or all of us could use that as a project as well. Yeah. <laughs> right, like an HPL or something, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, the reason I'm excited about it, and I, I'm not so much a gadget guy, although I can catch on to things, but I was having a conversation with PJ, and, and he just really highlighted the fact that we no longer have the legacy curriculum to depend upon. So now everybody, if we're going to make education progress, it has to be through Pathways. And it was like, oh, my God, I just, I didn't even think about it like that, but I realized this is more important than me being an area director or anything is to do my best to help people become more familiar with pathways so we can continue to make the great progress that we have been making. How many another really, sorry, another really great resource if you are on Facebook, uh, Michelle, who's in our division, she, I believe she's the one who started the Pathways Discussion Forum group. Yes. And okay. I put the link in the chat that is great because you have thousands of people from all over the world talking about pathways, asking the same questions, getting answers from people that really, really know pathways. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, and James Watt had had been doing sessions for two years, right. actually a little bit longer than two years, because when we first rolled out pathways. He was, he was instrumental in doing that. And I don't know if he's going to continue doing that, you know, now that the legacy program is going to be done, but 
you know, we'll probably be finding out a little bit more from him and obviously anything that he's going to do or any other Toastmaster is going to do kind of district wide, I would think that they would put, it, it, well, it would be in voices first and then definitely it would be posted on the website somewhere. But, you know, hopefully we'll find out a little bit more about that if anybody is going to be, you know, running those. If, if the three of you that were talking about this, if you decide to do it, we want to make sure that it gets posted on the district level so that, you know, really everybody can participate if they want. Well, that's great. Um, well, I'll tell you that the vision that I have, and I would love to hear at some point, this is probably an email conversation, but um, I recently put on a music event. I'm a music teacher where we brought in a guest uh, uh, clinician and we ended up, I, I was originally planning 90 minutes. We ended up going twice as long and I was like, oh my God, what happened? <laughs> and I realized what we needed to do was limit the number of participants, maybe mm -hmm. you know, 10 minutes per participant. Secondly, get questions in advance if possible. And, and don't worry, we're here next month or next week, whatever it is, but in advance, limit the number of participants and each participant gets 10 minutes um, and we can vet the questions ahead of time. Uh, we can be well prepared and then we can literally budget it down to, you know, a 60 minute or you know, even longer session, but probably not too long because we might get a little tired or whatever, but that's my, uh, my thinking on that. And, and, I, and we can collaborate further if you guys think that might be interesting. I think also for those people who are contemplating being a club coach, club sponsor, club mentor, particularly a club sponsor when a, people are brand new, um, I know it's worked well for coach masters where we, we just set aside an officer meeting to teach the officers and we, um, Brian Cargill led it and he just went, you know, back and forth in terms of clicking and moving forward. And he went through his path so they could see it. Um, and again, for some people it was too fast and they hadn't logged in yet. They hadn't chosen a path yet. For other people, it was just what they needed to kind of get what their appetite. Um, well, I'm, and Adele, I think, and Erica, what I'll do is I'll reach out to Patrick and just make the suggestion that okay, we might be fun to at least try. Yeah, and Patrick will be all in. <laughs> I guarantee well, you that. <laughs> the thing that I forgot to mention, I'm so sorry, I'm a little scattered. You keep the five participants, only five people participate, but you can have a hundred people watching and learning. So it's still open, but yet we can stay focused at the same time. Mm -hmm. By the way, I love that name. You guys have a club called Coach Masters? Yeah, it's, 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 it's like co executive coaches, life coaches, health and fitness coaches. So anybody who has a coaching, um, an entrepreneurial spirit, yeah. Okay. I was thinking, because I had done a little club coaching, of which was very difficult yes. for me. Uh, <laughs> I would have liked a club called Co Coach Masters <laughs> you know, going into that. Uh, I've since learned a lot since, you know, since that time. But uh, yes, uh, Coach Masters, what a great idea. <laughs> and Dave, keep an eye out because when I first gave this presentation at the last TLI, it was actually James's time, but he wasn't he hadn't been feeling well and he had signed up for the pathways for members and the pathways for base camp managers. So I just took over the pathways for members part. So he has so much knowledge about this. I've seen recently, and I thought it was with these, they have the Wednesday's wonderful webinars that are coming. Oh. And I thought there was something in there from him about pathways. And if you're really starting to get excited about this, it might be, it might be a good idea to start stalking James is what I'm really trying to say. <laughs> oh, okay, it's like Wherever a Wednesday, he goes. Wednesday um, regular session, it sounds like. Well, I, I think that a lot of the sessions that James did over the last two years were recorded. I think he probably has like Zoom recordings of all of those or, or the district has them. So there, there's a wealth of resources uh, out there uh, yes, I have started to study those as well. And I must admit, I'm so hands-on. I can definitely learn from videos. And then like if I'm driving with someone, that's helpful as, as well. Uh, but that's the um, person you may want to also reach out to is Leanna. Because Leanna is um, the education contact, district education coordinator next year. And she's the one scheduling all the Wednesday, wonderful Wednesdays. Wonderful and Wednesdays. I will write this wonderful Wednesday down. Thank you. It looks like James has July 13th from seven to eight. Oh, 
Okay. For Wonderful Wednesday. I'm going to put that in my Erica, great presentation. And I love the slides. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, it was very good. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Take care. I really appreciate the extra time as well. Yeah, no problem. So again, just anybody feel free to email me and I will save the chat so that I can email back whoever may have reached out. So thank you so much, everyone.